from around the globe. It's theCUBE, with coverage of KubeCon and CloudNativeCon Europe 2020, virtual. Brought to you by Red Hat, the Cloud Native Computing Foundation and ecosystem partners. Welcome back, I'm Stu Miniman and this is theCUBE's coverage of KubeCon, CloudNativeCon, the Europe 2020 virtual edition. Of course, even before 2020, security was one of the top concerns out there uh, with everyone working from home, some of the ramifications, what's uh, happening. Security is even more heightened and something we've had uh, great pleasure digging into in this cloud native ecosystem. Happy to welcome to the program, first time guest uh, and, and, and first time we've had Cyber Armor on theCUBE. So welcome Ben Hirschberg, who's the co-founder and vice president of R&D. Ben, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, thank you for having me, Steve. Thank you. All right, so, you know, Ben, 10 years ago when I became an analyst, uh, you know, security was one of those things that, you know, if you look at security and management overall, it's, ah, uh, these are the things we need to fix in IT. Unfortunately, a decade later, it's still something that I can say. So if you could just frame for us a little bit as one of the co-founders of the company, what was the why uh, for Cyber Armor? What did you see out in the marketplace? What was some of the core competencies that you and your team had uh, that, that made you form the company? Yeah, so it's a really good question because um, when we, three years ago, when we started to look around uh, in the cyber industry and, and, and we're really looking into what's happening today because Cyber Armor was uh, founded by veterans of the industry. And we were looking into what, what, part, what part of the chain was missing in the security field. And we saw that, that one of the key components, which is even today is missing and we are, we are coming in to solve it, is uh, the component of, of the software itself. I mean, we are really looking looked for many, many years, as, as just you said, we looked into the field and, and we saw firewalls and, and segments and perimeters, and we saw authentication of users. And th these were uh, more, more uh, the most important uh, aspects of cybersecurity. And, and we saw that there is a, a big change in the field because today the systems are, are so uh, elastic, so changing, so so much many uh, new uh, uh, components went into the field, and and so much is changing that we see that okay, we cannot still build our security upon the old infrastructure we had before, and we went into you know the most common denominator you have in the field, and it's the software, because if you're looking into what you are you know, what you are trying to protect today. Uh, obviously, you try to protect, protect your data, and your, your data is sitting behind some kind of software. And, and usually the software is run on some kind of an infrastructure, which is, you know, uh, in the old world, it was a data center. Today, we are everyone's going into the cloud. And between these two steps came into the new kind of containerization and, and cloud native infrastructure, which really changes the whole way we are looking into, um, we are looking into how to run our software today. And we saw that the, the most, uh, most common denominator is the software itself. So what we call workload. And we said that, well, if I need to protect something, I need to protect the workload and I run to protect it in a way that I don't really care who is running it and where it's being run. But I am, in our case, we are also a SaaS provider uh, of our security solution. When I'm running my workload, you know, I want to be in control. And this is the thing we are targeting. We are targeting giving the, the one who's writing the software, the one who is deploying the software, the owner of the service, giving him, let's say, the keys, okay, and only to him and no one else. All right, so, so Ben, if I hear you right, is that then the application developer is the one that's interacting with your software and using it? 
you know, obviously the, the, the DevOps movement uh, really rallied around telling people that security can't be an afterthought, mm -hmm. it needs to be something baked into the process. Um, more recently, DevSecOps is a term uh, that, that we hear uh, used quite a bit. So, you know, who, who are the people that are involved? Mm -hmm. where, where, help us understand a little bit, uh, really the organizational impact uh, of what you're yeah. doing. So, so today we see our world really gravitating towards development and DevOps. I mean, I see DevOps as an integral part of the development because we don't want to create, you know, a, a, a different organization to, to handle this, uh, this kind of deployment things. If I, if I have a, a group who's, uh, who's in charge of, who owns a service, I want this group to, to handle the service from A to Z. And, and we are targeting not really the develop, developers in the sense that we are not integrating the software with APIs, but we are integrating our solutions uh, through uh, the deployment tools. So there is, in order to use our solution, which is uh, actually a, a software identity-based control plane, um, you don't need to integrate it with, this, uh, with your software you're developing. We can take any kind of software anyone wrote, uh, and we can integrate it uh, with the system using uh, uh, cloud-native techniques like uh, Kubernetes integration. So it's really who is going to interface with our solution is more the DevOps and the Sec DevOps, as you mentioned. All right, yeah, Ben, when I look at your website, you talk quite a bit about uh, the integrations. You mentioned Kubernetes. Of course, we're, we're here at the, the, the Cloud Native Conference. So, you know, what integrations, you know, how much work is there to do to integrate with the various Kubernetes platforms? How do you tie into things like service mesh, meshes? Uh, are, are there any other of the, you know, dozens and dozens of projects uh, that the CNCF uh, has out there that, that your team needs to be uh, involved in integrating with? So, so we are, we took a really, um, yeah, it's an interesting phrase, but uh, we took an orthodox approach uh, here where um, we said that we want to uh, integrate with the core features of Kubernetes only because from our perspective, we don't want to bring in um, other solutions in, in, into the um, service space, what our customers are having. So therefore, uh, we are integrating ourselves only with the Kubernetes core component. And literally, the installation of, of our system takes a, a, a second, uh, and which is partial because Kubernetes itself is such a good solution that such a good uh, project that that literally the installations and, and all setups are, 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 are taking no time. Um, and, and we are uh, bringing our own service-to-service -service authentication control plane. We are, we are, uh, you know, we are in our early stage startup um, and, and we are looking into developing our solutions to integrate with the service mesh also at a later phase. Uh, bring our security on board and, and, and bring, you know, also there the missing chain in the security, uh, which the service mesh was missing. Um, because we, we simply see that there are really great products and really great solutions there. So we want to enable, you know, uh, our customers to, to enjoy all they can, um, but without, you know, compromising their security. All right, uh, your product itself, what, what's the relationship with open source? Many of the companies we've seen doing security, uh, you know, have open source projects. Uh, you know, you, 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 when the event is in person, you walk around the show floor um, and, you know, open source is a big piece of, of, of this community here. So what, 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 what's your relationship when it comes to open source? So uh, it's a really good, really interesting question because I actually also, all of, our, nearly all of our founders came from the direction, not from the open source, but from, from classical closed source companies. And, and partially this is, uh, this is due to the, simply the sensitivity of the, of the security field. And, and um, there are historical reasons for that. But I myself and, and some of you know, our, our key people have always uh, uh, 
uh, always, you know, gave into open source and, and, and took part in many uh, open source projects in, in, in the past. As a company, CyberArmor looks uh, into open source as something, you know, very, very valuable. We are really looking uh, uh, um, into how we can interact and how we can open source our uh, uh, parts of our solution, which are uh, which can you know make interest other companies and other people because uh, you know there, every one of us knows that there are two main reasons you know to open source. You know, one is uh, um, it shows some kind of transparency. Uh, and the other is, you know, to let others enjoy also, you know, your project and, and take part in it. So uh, right now at this stage, we have uh, only, you know, uh, uh, a few uh, open source uh, uh, parts of our system, which are more, more we have open sourced them for uh, transparency uh, reasons. But we're really, really looking into every day nearly looking into how we could, you know, take some parts of our system and make it generally available because because people think we, we think it's a good idea all right uh, Ben what can you tell me about your customers uh, oftentimes if you've got an example even if it's anonymized uh, you know help, helps explain the, the value proposition of, of what your company is okay. offering so uh, um, I well, well where to start so um, one of our first customers is a big service provider, a, a, a B2C service provider, uh, which is a well-known company. And he, this company really had big, high security uh, expectations from, from, from the cloud native systems. And, and they tried many solutions in order to protect their services and, and their internal service-to-service -service communication. And they, they simply, after a few trials, they, they, they tried our solution and, and understood that, that our solution has also big benefits from the security side and upside from the performance side. Uh, therefore, they, they decided to go, go with CyberArmor in order to protect their uh, uh, east-west communications within their systems. Uh, another company, uh, which is a B two B two C company, um, uh, simply are, is deploying his system in uh, in, a, in, a, in, a, on a, in a cloud infrastructure, which is uh, which they are less, less uh, rely on and less feel uh, uh, secure because of legal reasons. And therefore, they decide to use CyberArmor in order to completely protect uh, 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 their services, and not just the communication between the services, but also the the um, intellectual property they they have uh, uh, within their services, in order to you know protect themselves. Um, and this uh, and they are you know this is a very interesting use case because they are simply I think one of the biggest, uh, you know, beyond Google and Facebook and the big companies we know, cloud companies we know, uh, they are one of the biggest uh, uh, cloud users I know. Uh, so, so they really have a, a very interesting scale of going from, really from you know, 3,000 uh, nodes uh, in Kubernetes spawning up to, uh, within a few hours, to, to 100,000 nodes. Uh, scale, which is uh, uh, which was you know a very interesting experience for us because you know as a new startup you know this is how you are trying your system out and and prove that your solution is indeed uh, made for the cloud and you know we're really happy to 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 say that we passed this phase. All right. Well, Ben, since, since you have the R&D uh, component uh, in your role, uh, give us a little bit of an insight as to the, the things you're working on, what, what, what you see as some of the big challenges that uh, the security in this space uh, need to be addressing uh, a little bit further down the road. So um, there are two big things which we are working on, and I think that that um, um, that two interesting, uh, two interesting parts of the security uh, question. Because one part is that no one of us really like to pay 
more for security. We don't like to pay for it. We want just to have it. Okay, it's something, you know, you want to be, be there, but you don't want to know about it. And when we, you know, we are talking uh, about, you know, even here in, in, at KubeCon, we are talking about uh, uh, inter uh, simple things like, you know, moving from clear communication to, to TLS, uh, we right away uh, understand that it costs us money. And one of our, uh, our uh, biggest goals here is to, to add security with, without having excessive cost uh, for the service provider. Uh, and, uh, and we really are trying to improve our, our, our system and make them more uh, performing uh, in the sense that, that they, they should take as less toll uh, on uh, on the services they can in order to provide the security, and the other big part is uh, is runtime security because our solution is is making sure that that you know that your workload which you are running in your system is keep being the same workload uh, throughout the whole runtime process uh, 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 just as you want it to be. And in order to do that, we are taking what they call uh, what we call a code DNA in the CI/CD of, of our customers, and we understand how this, his workload should work. And in runtime, we, we make sure that that his workload is not uh, changing uh, maliciously, and the same behavior stays as it should be. And you know, this is something you know we are really improving because we are looking into the newest attacks. Uh, f uh, coming from you know many many directions, and we want to incorporate that in our solutions and make sure that that when that you can you know throughout the whole uh, runtime process of your workload, we can keep you secure and safe. Um, and, and this you know this is very interesting work. And you know as someone uh, as I'm who is a, a veteran of, of cyber security and a white hack hacker of myself. Uh, in my previous uh, uh, jobs, uh, I you know I see this as something really, really interesting and really evolving today. All right. Well, Ben Hirschberg, thanks so much for introducing our community to Cyber Armor. Great catching up with you. Yeah, I was glad to be here. Thank you very much. All right, and thank you. Uh, stay tuned for more coverage of KubeCon, Cloud Native Con. I'm Stu Miniman, and thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.